Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we'll be solving this problem from the chapter kinematics and this is the check your understanding 36 problem. So try this problem out for three to four minutes and then come back for the solution guys. So the problem statement is that we are we are being given four identical rods that are hinged at their ends to make a parallelogram. The hinged joint A is rigidly attached to a wall and the opposite joint C is pulled away from the wall with a constant acceleration of A. Initially, the joints A and C were coincident. We have to find the acceleration vector of the joint B and this is the X direction and this is the Y direction. So this is how the situation looks like. Now let's say the point C has a velocity. Now the acceleration of the point C is given to be A i cap. So we can write dV by dt to be equal to A and from here we'll get the value of V to be A multiplied by t. This would be our equation number one. Now let's say this distance is X and let's say this distance is some Y. Now by symmetry we can say even this distance is x. So if we differentiate the position coordinate of point C, that would be equal to v, right? So we can get, we'll get twice of dx by dt to be v. And from here we'll get the value of dx by dt to be v by 2. So now if we observe, uh, the x coordinate of point B is basically x i cap, right? And as we have the derivative, now as we have dx by dt, so we can say the velocity of B in the x direction is v by 2. So if I isolate rod a, b and draw its, so this end is moving towards the right with a velocity of v by 2. This angle is given to be theta. As this end a is hinged, so we can clearly say the net velocity must be perpendicular to the rod. So we can say the, the vertical component of velocity vy simply v by 2 tan theta, right? So finally we can write the velocity of v in vector form as v by 2 i cap minus v by 2 tan theta j cap. Okay, so now as we want the acceleration of b, we can simply differentiate the velocity vector and we'll get the acceleration of b as. Now the derivative of v is a, right? So dv by dt would be a. So this would be a by 2 i cap. Now here we have to use product rule because even theta is varying with time. So if you differentiate the v, it'll be a by 2 tan theta. Now we are going to keep the velocity constant and differentiate tan theta. So the derivative of tan theta will be secant squared theta multiplied by d theta by dt. And this would be the component in the j cap direction. Now going back to this rough sketch that we drew, uh, this angle is going to be theta. So what is the omega of the rod AB? So it will be equal to, uh, so the net velocity as it is perpendicular, its magnitude would be the square root of v by 2 whole squared plus v by 2 tan theta whole squared and that will come out to be v by 2 secant theta. So the omega of rod AB will be v by 2 secant theta divided by the length of rod AB which is which let's say for the moment is L. So and this will also be equal to d theta by dt. So now we have the value of d theta by dt as well. So let's try to substitute it in our equation. So it will be a by 2 i cap a by 2 tan theta now v as we determined earlier to be at right so let's just substitute that in here at divided by 2 now the value of at by 2 uh, times c squared theta multiplied by and d theta by dt is v divided by v divided by 2 and v i am going to write it as at now as l is an unknown so let's try to eliminate that from this triangle l sine theta to be equal to x right dx by dt we found it out to be v by 2. So from here we can get, get x dx equals. Now velocity, we determined it to be at. So this will be at by 2 dt. Now if we integrate it. Okay, so at t equal to 0, the value of x would be 0. And why is it? Because it's given that initially a and c were coincident. Okay, so and at any general time t, the value of x is x. And from here we'll get the value of x as a function of time to be a t squared divided by 4. So as we have x now, the value of L is going to be a t squared upon 4 sine theta. Okay, so now we have got L. Now substituting it back into our equation, it will be a by 2 i cap minus. So L is again a t squared upon 4 sine theta. So after solving, after manipulating, we finally get the acceleration to be this. Some of you guys might have gotten the doubt that Instead of taking this velocity v, why don't I just take a and, you know, write the length constraint at point b. So we can just, uh, through differentiation, we can determine that the acceleration at this point is going to be a by 2, right? 
and then I can get the acceleration vertically to be a by 2 tan theta just like we did with the velocity. So now as you can see this is not the answer right. So if in this case the acceleration will come out to be a by 2 i cap minus a by 2 tan theta j cap and this is so you got this term and this term but you're missing out on this term. That is the term because of the rotation of this rod and that is and that will and you will ignore that uh, if you use this constraint. Okay, and that term arises beca because of the velocity v. So the rod gains some velocity v after some time and because of that it will have some centripetal acceleration and you're going to miss out on that term if you, you know, started with a. So yeah, that was it for this video guys. If you have any doubt, you can comment down below and thanks for watching.